Biggest show we've ever done. It's Kevin Hart. The one thing you guys should definitely realize, Dwayne would never do this. And I'm not calling him a bad person, but. <laughs> do you think you missed a major shot when you lost the entourage to Bow Wow? Absolutely. Who knows where I would be if I had Come on. <laughs> Who, Who knows? knows where you could have been? I thought I was tall, so I got around tall people. My crew was all the same size. I was like, this is good. And then I got around tall people. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Have you heard about men getting four inch leg extensions? I have. And then are you considering that? No, it's the stupidest shit ever. Doing it. Nobody's gonna think you had a growth spurt. You, you, <laughs> yeah. We did have a great time. I love Saudi. Yeah, that Saudi's great. O almost, I mean, like, Saudi is dope. Um, and so is South Africa, where Prime just launched. <laughs> Damn, I was the only one that clapped. <laughs> Prime Zone's checkers in South Africa. We finally Dude. Did. Whoa. Dude. Man. Whoa. Come on in, bro. I wasn't expecting him to look that cool in real life, he looks bro. Fucking cool. He just set up a competitive brand. I'm not even fucking lying, dude. Did you he set up a competitive this brand? Starting the first so, thing he did. This is starting so bad. Kevin. So, hey Kev. Oh. Let's Go. What's up, man? How y'all doing? <laughs> Good, go, man. Kev. Thanks for coming on our show. <laughs> Did Mr. I get Hart. Do I have any? Where, I left my Grand Coromino. Did I have any? Well, he, he miss, <sighs> he's missing something. I got to give them that. I, don't worry. I'll, I'll give them cases of it. I'm fine. I think I'm settled. Is it alcohol? I think, I am. I think I'm settled. Yes, I'm ready, though. Okay. Why, why you got this upside? You know I was fucking coming. What, what do you, why didn't you do this? What's going on? Ice, Ice Cube was wearing those headphones before you. Yeah. What's happening? I mean, it's, Ice it's Cube, set up Ice, Kevin? for a much bigger man. What are you guys doing? It was, it was Ice Cube. It was Ice Cube. He's not okay. that much bigger. Okay. He said you owe him he money, said you Kevin. Owe him a dollar, Kevin. One dollar. He said he, said he wants do. to wire, he wants you to wire <laughs> him a dollar. I probably do. By the way, you, you've never talked to like a nicer person in the world. He's no, nothing like you would expect, is he? Not no, really. He wasn't. Not, <laughs> he's not at all. Like you would expect. Dude, no, I asked, wasn't. We asked him what he likes to do in his spare time. He said, "Think of other stuff to do." Yeah, like it was just such an answer. Q, I didn't even know where to go with it. Bro. I don't even know what your conversation was about, but I know Cube so well. Cube is not only Cube may be one of the most genuine, uh, kindest spirits that you can be around. He wants nothing but good for other people. He loves to see the people around him succeed. Uh, and he's such a he's such a creative mind, man. Damn. Like that's that's all he does. Like he he loves the foundation of creativity. And the most one of the most professional people I've worked with on the set. That's Damn, crazy. He, 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 he was just he, he did, did not talk about, about you about like that. You. Yeah, yeah really. it was like the exact really opposite. Are you sure? Did you guys ask him? To, did you guys ask him he, like good questions? No, yeah. no, no. Our, yeah, our show is shit. Yeah, I was gonna say it's gotta be the interview. But he said he said y'all were real tight at one point, yeah. and then you you became friends with um with The Rock, and you just forgot about him completely. Th that's why you owe him a dollar. He said. Yeah. this is ridiculous. That's what he said. He <laughs> said ridiculous. What are you talking about? Cube is <laughs> Cube is one of my Cube is one of my best friends in the business. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that about me and Cube. Uh, dude, before we start, man, I want to say congrats. Um, you know, I don't I don't just come and sit and. You know, not taking advantage or an opportunity to say actually why I'm here. I'm here. I'm here because like you guys are doing dope shit. I'm a fan of the podcast. Thanks, man. I'm a fan of the platform. I'm a fan of the success. Um, and I love the fact that you came and that you did cold as balls, man. And I believe like good business is good relationships. So this is a relationship move. This is me showing you that I didn't forget our beginning stages of how we got to the place of just camaraderie and having an understanding of, hey, Kev, can you do this thing? Sure, Logan. Logan, can you do this thing? And it's continuing. I think like that shit evolves. And over the course of time, you look up. Kev, you're doing some dope shit. appreciate the shit out of you, dude. Mm -hmm. I, I mean it. Now it's my turn. You are the most genuine, down-to-earth, humble guy for your amount of success. It makes no sense. And when I came on Cold as Balls and I mentioned coming on the podcast and you said, I'll do it. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. You know? Really? I mean. You have a lot of that. You do that a lot. What doubt? That, that doubt thing? You do that a lot. Like every time we talk, there's a moment, <laughs> uh, and I go, "Why? Why would you think that?" You go, I don't. I don't know. You know, sometimes, you know what? Actually, we talked about this on the show. Yes. You, you know how sometimes I, I, people be like, "Yo, like let's swap numbers." Like I'll give him my number out of pity. Yes. You'll just tell him no, no. <laughs> yeah, I have no interest. <laughs> why? Yeah, well, I'm at a point in my life where I'm not looking for yeah. new numbers in my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, no, you're honest. <laughs> you were you were honest with me, and you've always been honest with me, and 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 open to me too, man. Like what, the first video we made the dab is dead mm -hmm. back in hawaii yes 
I, I was like, yo, Kev, I, I need you to just like dab. We're going to walk around this hotel for 45 minutes. And you, you trusted me. Some fucking internet kid with this stupid, silly idea. 75 million views later. Well, you don't know what you don't know. First collab. Uh, you know, off the bat, did it sound like lightning in a bottle? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Stupid uh, ass video. Kev, we're going to touch our forehead 86 <laughs> times, yep. and we're going to do it as fast <laughs> as we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, I guess, man. How long is it going to take? <laughs> That's my big thing. <laughs> how, how long is this shit going to take? Uh, but, dude, I love, I love like, thinking about, like, the times then, and I love seeing you become the massive success that you are, but it's all... I hope people really follow the story and understand, like, the real underlying... The underlying like thread, man. You're just a serial entrepreneur, serial and, killer. and fucking an entrepreneur. <laughs> like entrepreneurs just don't like the word no, or they don't like to be told about the things they can't do. So yeah. they find a, a hell of a lot of ambition and like achieving the things that they aren't supposed to achieve. Yeah. And like I hope you're following your fans. Embrace that the most like that's the dopest thing about you and your brother and you know here just this all of this shit like it's it's not written and you guys are writing like your own thing it's crazy bro i don't know what's going on kev but but i i, I do look to people like you uh uh and and and, and Dwayne even um and you guys kind of paved the blueprint for the lack of blueprint that exists now in this in this world that we're doing i mean bro you're come on you're you're a, you're an icon you're you're probably one of the biggest stars in the world right now, definitely the biggest guest we've ever had on Impulsive. And the fact that you're gracing us with your time, I mean, you know, this 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 doesn't uh, uh, go uh, unnoticed by I me. I appreciate it. I mean, look, my life. the one thing that you guys should definitely realize, that I think the one thing that we should just clear up right away is Dwayne would never do this yeah. because he's not... He's not the same type of person, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm not calling him a bad person in no way, shape, or form, yeah. but... <laughs> Right, like you guys, like we're saying stuff without saying but it. But I feel he, like you know, you know, who I also just got off the phone with before you got here, uh, Doctor Pat. Ah, Sport, I love Doctor Pat. Sports rehab, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, dude. I found his. Uh, I mean, when you got in that car accident, that's who got me back. Right, that's who got like single handedly. That's who got me back. You were in the hospital for ten days. I was in the hospital for fourteen. Jeez. Fourteen days, uh, and they wanted me to go through like the rehabilitation in the hospital. And, you know, as a guy who prides himself on being physically fit, um, you know, when you're at a point of having no control where you really see your body go back to ground zero, um, the trust in who you're going to attach yourself to get you back up to the to the space of good is important. So Dr. Pat, man, Dr. Pat has been I've been with Dr. Pat for years and I called him. And I was like, dude, I don't want to go to like a sports rehab center where there are levels below what you are and what you've done. Mm. I would much rather you and I start at ground zero, be honest with me about how weak, how bad, so that I got my stages of growth. Because, you know, the hospital talk is different. And the, um, the people there, the therapists and stuff, um, and their rehab centers are just different. And there's a different level of patience. There's a different level of, of understanding. And it's all very minimal to a certain degree because, you know, they just want, they want to make sure that you're careful. So um, I, I wanted to be in a space of comfort to be minimal. And, and with somebody that I knew knew me, understood my body and would understand the injury. And Dr. Pat did a fucking phenomenal job, man. Like It was scary, dude. We, we, awesome. we were worried. We what? were worried about scary you, Scary is an understatement. I mean, you're talking about... I, I remember... <laughs> I remember, like, it got to the point where you 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 have the, like, the light bulb of, oh, fuck. Like, the things that you don't really think too much about. When you can't do them anymore, it's, it's catastrophic. Mm, yeah. You know, I'm talking taking a sock on and off. Mm. I'm talking about, you know, the the putting a belt on or lifting up a bowl or play like the things that you just do and you have no idea or mindset of how fortunate you are to be able to do them. It's it's a real it's a real fucking shell shock. What's that man. what's that saying a healthy man wishes for a million things and unhealthy man wishes for just one? One. Yeah. Isn't it crazy it's, how much you take shit for granted until you're 
laying in that bed, looking at that doctor, looking at that nurse, putting that the, the tubes in you and all that you shit. Have never been more, you've never been more accurate. Speaking of which, uh, Jamie Foxx, our mm -hmm. thoughts are, are with him. Absolutely. Uh, crazy situation over the past couple of weeks with, with Jamie's health. Have you heard anything about his situation? Um, I mean, I've heard things, but I wouldn't, you know, I think I'm, I'm very um, fortunate to, to have the relationship that I have with Jamie and to be able to just check on him and stuff like that. So, you know, they're being tight and for reasons just about where he is because Jamie's always been a private person to a certain degree. Um, but, you know, I think the dope thing is that he's getting better in this situation. And, you know, everybody's prayers, everybody's um, love, energy, all that stuff is seen and felt. So in this case, man, you know, you just want the guy to, to get out of the situations and then get back home. Um, you know, I don't know the details uh, or the exact details as to what's going on, but to my knowledge is there is a, a lot of progression in the world of better, man. So, you know, my love, uh, synergy, energy goes out to him. He's needed. He's necessary. I know that he knows that. And, um, you know, I know that he feels that because there has been an outcry and outpour of, uh, of support in this regard. So I can only hope that it continues. Tragedy sucks, dude. Tra tragedy sucks. And he's obviously like hopefully getting the operations he needs to be back to you. You, you did as well. You might want to go to Kevin's next comedy show. Why would you not? He's hilarious. Well, that's good news because today's sponsor is SeatGeek. We love you, SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports festivals, and more. Kevin's Heartbeat Comedy and Music Festival is going down July in Las Vegas. So peep SeatGeek for the best tickets. They put all the tickets from across the web in, web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is graded to make sure you get a good deal. Look for the green dots. Green means good. Red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know I came for through for you guys. We got my code Logan, $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with the promo code Logan. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Now, <laughs> back to the show, man. Speaking of like operation surgery and stuff, um, have you heard about men getting the four-inch leg extensions? I have. And then are you considering that? You know, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know Like in general Or just with that specific <laughs> No I, I just want to Like what the fuck Is going on in general <laughs> Like like there's Like at some point At some point We gotta hold The right people Accountable yeah. And it, it's the doctors At this point Like <laughs> Like I don't know What you're doing To sell That you can pull All this shit off Like what I don't understand The confidence And comfort That you have In delivering These messages <laughs> Like all I got to do is take your fibula and, and <laughs> add bone. And extend, add bone. And I can add bone. Listen, it's easy. Like when, you, when you're when you saying shit <laughs> like crazy. I can open your hips up and I can add. The, the, you don't need this bone here. So what I can do, I'm going to take it from here. I'll put it right here. People, I can extend people are doing it. No, it's the stupidest people shit ever. People are doing it. You're, you're jeopardizing everything. Like, what? <laughs> like by the way. Nobody's gonna think you had a growth spurt. You, you, <laughs> you clearly got the work done. This is what I'm saying. Like people, people are losing their fucking minds. Yeah, man. man yeah. Like they're here. I don't. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do with their lives. It's your life, all right. And you, we only get one to my knowledge, right? Now there may be more. Let's say, let's say there, there, there are more. Right and spiritual versions or whatever. Okay, great. But to my knowledge, you get the one. Live it however the fuck you want. Do with it what you may. What with the part that makes me go like, wow, is when people get this shit and they just show up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like everybody's not gonna go. Hey man, what the fuck you just do? Like, you, 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 have hair, like, you have hair now. Yeah, you didn't. Know the fuck I was just with you yesterday. You didn't pull this shit. You were six six. Like, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's the surprise factor in the you know the immediate want for the attention that's attached to that. And you know, I I, I really hope and pray that this this thing of just like um, acceptance or looking for it from others calms a little bit, right? Like to where. We're not we're not worried as much about the words or the 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 side of like 
acceptance from people you don't fucking know. You know what I mean? Or people that have no value to you, your life. Like looking for the, yeah, from the shit that don't matter, I hope calms a little bit because this thing, like the, the motherfuckers getting their knees extended or whatever. Yeah, but that's not going to, nothing's going to change there because that concept of wanting to be accepted for vanity stats in life, like height, and all that shit is not new. It's just more under a magnifying glass now because of social media. You know what I'm saying? But since yeah. the beginning of time, people always wanted to be the tallest, the richest. I've never like wanted this. to be tall. Really? No. Never. It not never once. affected you ever in, in your in your life? At one point, I mean, I thought I was tall until I got around tall people. <laughs> My crew was all the same size. I was like, this is good. Like, we're killing it. And then I got around tall people. I was like, oh, shit. Well, this is different. <laughs> well, the NBA ain't happening. Uh, but I think there's there's perks and benefits for wherever you are. Like wherever yeah. you sit, stand, there's perks and benefits. What's the one of the perks of being short, like not as? What did you say? You what you? The fuck did you just? What did you say? What did you just? Say? I was. Can, do you want? I'm not trying what to. What did you say? Because well, that's our guest. Yeah. What the fuck just happened? Like we were on a roll, and then you you called me. Sh what? Did you, well, I just said sh I was gonna say a fan of sheep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. What's one of the perks of being fans a fan of sheep? The the <laughs> biggest perk, the biggest perk <laughs> to being a five five male. It's the clothes. My access to fucking clothes is ridiculous. You could go to Baby Gap and get. Well, that's the, that's aggressive. Okay, what you just did. <laughs> Very aggressive. I'm sorry. What you just did. Okay, I'm just talking about the opportunity to be fashionable and and you know having abundance of choices. It's ridiculous. I love I love the world of clothes. Do you have a, you have a stylist? I do have a stylist. You got a, you probably got a Ashley big, North. A big Shout out to Ashley North. I have, I have a team. I have a nice team. It takes a village. You don't have a team for well for your empire. I mean, I can. I mean, you got an empire, dude, and and yeah. you, and you you do so much. Yeah. Do you still consider yourself a comedian first and foremost? Um, it's a fucking good question. Good for you, Logan. <laughs> Thank um, you. I am a comedian first. Uh, there is a massive world that the world of comedy presented to me and for me. Mm. So my commitment to comedy is there forever, but now I'm 43 and there's a broad overview that I have on just business and entertainment. So I try to think of things um, on, a, on a larger scale, right? And what, what used to be the thought of like one thing and one thing only is now a thought, well, how does this thing help this thing and how does this thing create a better opportunity for this like thing? Like an ecosystem. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So, so now I'm more, I'm more focused on the world of the ecosystem, the brand of the ecosystem, the business and the opportunities that can come from the ecosystem. Um, I'm more focused on the team, the corporation, the people that work underneath the corporation's umbrella, the jobs that the corporation are providing for others. Like, see what I'm saying? Like, it's now a thought. That's, that's under the thought, under the thought. Entertainment mastery. That's where, you're, that's you're, where you're at your, like, grandmaster status, it sounds like. I'm, I'm in the beautiful mind stage where I can see how everything is starting to formulate and go together. Yeah. And it's all about the execution of it. And the one thing that I've realized now, and I love to echo it, is the the best way to get to any place of value is understanding that you can't be the best person or the smartest person. You have to move yourself out of the way and allow other people to show their value, their talents. And that's how <clears throat> empires grow. That's how mm -hmm. opportunities continue to come in um, and companies start to exceed expectations. It's, it's riding off of the backs of the creatives, the, you know, the heads of the CEOs, CFOs. There's so many minds that you have to invest in and ultimately be comfortable sitting at a table with and going, how are we going to make this thing better? And as a leader, the thing that you try to lead on the most is showing that you're willing to be a part of a team. 
and that you don't have to control and operate everything. Mm, mm. And when was people that, kind of piggyback off of that, it gets dope. Mm. Was that easy for you to to like accept the idea of having other people like jump into what you, you might have believed at one point to be like your shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, was it always easy to delegate and to and to like sit at a table with other people and, and give that type of responsibility away as a creative? That's not always the easiest thing. No, because it's not it's not easy. I mean, dealing with people is not easy, right? Like not not dealing with a lot of personalities. Like everybody, everybody has a want, a need, an yep. opinion, yep. Um, a feeling, uh, frustration, or not, right? Like everybody has something that will ultimately present itself to be a problem. And in the beginning stages, you want to combat things. You want to argue and you want to stand on the ground of this is my shit. And if you're not a part of my shit, then you don't need to be here with my, like those are the younger immature stances. And then as you grow, you start to figure out other ways to communicate, um, other ways to align yourself with other people. And then you also got to, Start to humble yourself a little bit. I was gonna say, so just the way you're talking and and and, and knowing your career, like you you have had the uh, what I'm gonna call now privilege of being humbled a couple times. By a couple, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah a couple, shit, yeah. I mean, li life, life, as count. we said on coldest balls, has you know smacked us both in the dick yeah, a couple times. But you need it. <laughs> you need it. Like I don't like. We live in a time now where people are so, people are so taken, taken back by the mistake. Mm. <gasps> How could what? <laughs> You're fired, motherfucker. You should never work again. Life for you stops at the age 28. <laughs> like, like we Oh, that's so fucking stupid. Yeah, like, like, if you just <laughs> zoom out for one second, like oh my god, that's so dumb. It's so ridiculous. Like, you the beauty of talking to an older individual, and I've said this before, if you are lucky enough to have Older people around you, take advantage of just sitting there and listening. And what you'll find when you listen, there's not only dope stories, there's a dope like fucking overview of life and, and life and the different levels that life presented. That individual, good, bad, ugly, but somehow they made it to the age whatever. When we're acting as if at these young ages we have life figured out and we don't need this shit up here. We don't need your knowledge, your information, your opportunities, your longevity. We don't need it because right here today we deem this as a no mistake fucking yeah. zone. Like that's, it's the most ridiculous thing. And I think, you know, now there's a nice calm that presented itself. And also... You have to be able to look from both POVs, right? Like you should, one thing that I got real good at is not, I don't just expect people to see my point of view. I'm fortunate enough to be able to see your point of view and my point. Like I can look from both ways. I've and, been And feel it. Probably. I've been on both sides. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't think that I have to be right all the time. I don't think that I know everything. I remember what it was like when I felt I did. I know the consequences that came from that. Mm -hmm. We have to be comfortable with understanding that we don't know everything and sometimes it's good to put ourselves in a position to learn more. And in learning more, sometimes you should forgive more. And forgiving more, sometimes it can create an opportunity for better shit to happen. Some people don't deserve the second opportunity because the thing could be so drastic. And the level of attention and the, the spotlight that has been shined on some have changed and redirected a stance in culture and corporation um, in the road to equality, uh, how we talk and treat our women. Like a lot of things now are changing for the better, but it's because of the spotlight, which is a great thing. But everything doesn't deserve the same energy. Everything isn't the same problem. Yep. Right? Yep. So finding that balance, I think, is where people now are are trying to get. And that that board that we're standing on is just one that's not even. But I promise you, if we embrace more the opportunity of people are going to fuck up, people are going to go do stupid shit. Every person isn't the worst person that does it. Some people honestly are wrong space, wrong time, yep. wrong feeling, wrong mindset, wrong surroundings. <coughs> so you know what I mean? Zoom out. It sounds like it's once in a while you have to. Yeah. I, th I, I remain optimistic that we're kind of heading there. Anyways, yeah. I feel better about like 
cancel culture and all that yeah. shit now, you know? I, yeah. I think I think people are understanding uh how humans are more now than ever. And we fuck up, man. Yeah. You know, we make mistakes. It's inevitable. Every person in this room has made plenty of errors and every person watching this will make plenty of errors. Isn't that why you have parents? Like <laughs> your, the parents are supposed to be there yeah. for the younger people you to know, say, hey, don't do this because this is what's gonna happen. The thing is, some some people like myself, especially like the, we got to touch that stove. Yeah, you know, stove's hot. Yeah, I think most people. But I, I got I got to see if the stove's hot. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get in there. I mean, you. But here's the thing: you're talking about touching the stove. Well, you didn't touch the stove necessarily in your house that you saw every day, because your parents were there. Mm. But then when you go to another place and there's a stove and nobody's there to not tell you to touch the stove, well, you know what? My mom and dad ain't fucking here. You know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna go over here and touch this fucking stove. I'm tired of people telling me not to touch the fucking stove. Yeah, so it's yeah. about it's about the things that you like. What are you okay or not okay with that you start to make the decision of chance on? Right? Like, what is your version of chance? And when you do take those versions of chance, you know, it, it, just like a fucking game. Uh, and just because it's basketball season, just using that as an analogy, every shot you take ain't going in. It don't necessarily mean they were all the worst shots. Mm. They weren't all the worst shots, but some of those shots that you felt were good shots didn't go in. People go, why the fuck you shoot it? Well, you thought I shot it because I thought I was going to miss it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody thinks they're going to fucking miss. <laughs> Nobody takes the shot and to intentionally say, man, I fucked that <laughs> off on purpose. Like Every shot is taking with the intent of making yeah. it. So, you know, I think when you understand that sometimes we're like scolding people for the thing that they thought ultimately had a good outcome behind it uh, can be wrong at times. Do you think you missed a major shot when you lost the role uh, on Entourage to Bow Wow? I, absolutely. Absolutely. Every role I fucking lost, I think it was a major <laughs> shot. Who knows where I would be if I had a Come on. <laughs> that one, does that one sting a little uh, bit? Does that one still sting? Who knows? knows where you could have been? Who knows where the fuck I would be if I got that role? Uh, you got, Dude, I read, you got I read no that, idea. I read that in the PDF. Uh, you got no idea where the you, fuck I could be. You were... You were upset because you, you you lost it to Bow Wow in Entourage. Story. I didn't I didn't know you, so that that hurt at the this time. Is a true story, yes. Well, come on, it's one of the uh, greatest shows. And it's, a good, the, it's a great not, show. And by the way, this is nothing against Bow Wow. Like Bow Wow was hot as fuck at the time. Phenomenal actor. Like you know, we had a lot of shit going on, but Entourage was cracking. Yeah, this show was everything. It was like this show. If you didn't know anything about LA, you based. Everything you thought off of entourage. entourage. Yeah. It was my and it was my college course to to come to LA. I, I I didn't know anything about this place. Jeff, my manager right there, goes just watch our entourage. And I, I mean, it's very true. Learn everything I need to know. One of the best. Like the show is so well casted, man. Um, Sheila Jaffe. Shout out to Sheila Jaffe too. I remember. Shout Sheila, out Sheila man. Jaffe. Sheila Jaffe, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Sheila Jaffe gave me some of like my first roles uh, in the beginning, like. You know, I don't forget shit. But this here, she had bought me in. She didn't get this to me, though. Then, uh, so maybe, I, maybe I should take the shout out back, Sheila. Um, but like the show, the reason why I say it was well casted, man, because they, they, these guys grounded it, right? Like that that world that Mark basically highlighted that mimicked his world of success. You know, they grounded it. So as funny and crazy as it was, I just wanted to be on the fucking show. And this role came up, and I was like, oh, my God, I got to get this. If I get this, holy shit, man, like, I'm out of here if I get this. Like, this is it. I need this. Like, every, you know, I was at the point in my career where everything was like, this is going to fucking. This will be the one. This is the one. Yeah. If I get this. And I didn't get it, man. And I'll never forget it. I remember watching it, and I saw Bow Wow doing the lines, and I was like. That was good. <laughs> I was like, that was pretty fucking good. I get it. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see why. He gave a better read. He gave a much better read. So I didn't get the part. <laughs> yeah, that's my entourage story. Did Did you have a moment, though? I mean, we're laughing about having the this is it moment. And I even, looking back, have a hard time figuring out when you went from the dude in 40-year-old virgin, mm -hmm. like the Ke Ke that comedian, the, Ke mm -hmm. the funny comedian, to that's Kevin fucking Hart. Mm -hmm. Was it um maybe spurred by social media? You started going crazy viral. I know, I know or, the moment. What was I know it? The material. I know the exact thing. And this is what like you you can't like you can't prepare for. 
the thing because you don't know that the thing is going to be there. Mm. You're preparing to just be ready for the opportunity when it presents itself. And that is staying in the gym, the acting classes, or being on stage as much as you possibly can, getting a tight set, staying true to it, having a tight set. I'm going to work on it all the time. And the reason why you're committing to that, because you don't know when the thing is. Mm. So, so the preparation for the thing is really camouflage because your preparation is just a consistency in saying, I'm just working as hard as I can to tighten up everything I have for if I ever get called for what the thing is going to be. You're ready. To stay ready. To be ready. But I don't know what the fuck it's for. But if that thing come, I'm going to knock it out the park. You stay ready. You don't got to get ready. what the yeah. fuck is it? Does anybody know what it is? Nobody's got an answer. Yeah. Everybody just keeps saying, you just got to be ready. <laughs> for what? Like, what is it? <laughs> I'll never forget it. I got asked to do... Uh, Shaq's All Star Comedy Jam, and um, Jeff Clanigan was one of the producers for it. Shaq, of course, it was his. And at the time, we were like touring, and he was like, "Kev, can you can you do it?" And I was like, "Man, I'm supposed to shoot my special, like coming up." And he was like, "Dude, just like we just do it during All Star Weekend. We're gonna shoot it as a special. Just do like 15 minutes or something." And I was like. I don't know, man, because I want to save it for my special. And I was going to film, I think I was about to film Seriously Funny. I was about to film Seriously Funny at the time. Yeah, Grown Little Man, Seriously Funny. Yeah, I was about to film Seriously Funny after. So I was like, all right, fuck it, I'll do it. And I didn't really care that much about it. I looked at it like I'm going to throw some material, like just in the wind that was kind of like leftover material. Man, I go and I do this shit and I say goodnight, crowd goes crazy, an amazing set. When I watched it, I closed out the special, but when I say goodnight, they put the goodnight in slow motion. For the people watching this podcast, go, go look up Kevin Hart, Shaq's All-Star Comedy Jam, and go to How I Departed the Stage. When I say goodnight in slow motion, they, they had me put up a peace sign. And I walk off the stage in like this slow motion, dramatic like effect. They didn't do it for like none of the other comics. It was the way that the that they were just wrapping up the special. So this wasn't necessarily like the launch pad for Kevin. It was them trying to put a dramatic, dope effect on this show. episode right. of Shaq's All Star Comedy Jam, volume, whatever. They've done several. Yeah. But this moment, that slow motion, that walk off. The shit hit Showtime and fucking boomed. I mean, took the fuck off. Wild. This is when social media was starting like to not like go crazy, but it was like people were on social media. You had things that you could like talk on and stuff. Oh my God, this conversation about me and comedy and Shaq's All-Star Comedy Jam. Wow, that's crazy. Keep in mind, I didn't care about that because I'm about to tape my special. special. <laughs> Hence, I taped my special. It just went off. Everybody was teed up to watch Seriously Funny because the Shaq All-Star Comedy Jam got everybody's attention. Uh. The slow motion made it, oh, God, that's the, oh, shit. Then Seriously Funny came out, and then it was over. But then, but then what, what? you got like 150 million Instagram followers. Like, who are these people? Where are they coming uh, from? I mean, over the course of years. Are year, they bots? Well, I mean, I, I'm not on there checking for bots and stuff, so I don't even know how to find out if they I were bots. I feel like they're bots. I mean, if they're bots, I guess they're bots. I don't, the beauty of social media is at this point, you you just have a direct line of communication mm. um, to the people that have supported you. But my my approach to social media is now different. Like, I'm nowhere near the social media person that you are. I got tons of, I mean, I probably got like 260 million total followers, but I'm not as engaging and knowledgeable as you are with how you approach it. At this point, I have to go and get people to put around me to help me think about the way to engage with the demographic today 
because it's not the same of old. It's not just about, yo, 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 hey, the, uh, and holding the fucking yeah. view, the phone like this. Hey, y'all already know what it is. <laughs> um, hey, y'all see it? Pancakes. <laughs> Eating like you that's not it anymore. It's like a it's a fucking business for so many, and it's a well manicured thing that people navigate and operate to the highest levels. So now it's like my fan base, well, what am I talking about? And what am I talking about it? I go less now so that when I do have something to talk about, it can be I can make it a thing. Quality. But yeah. yeah, but it's like yeah. I don't I don't have the bandwidth to do it at the level that I once did. So those followers and everything over the years, that's just people that are just supporting the journey of the career and the numbers just keep growing. Um, you know, cause I'm still doing movies. I'm still touring. That's the part that, that I'm in love with the most, you know, it's like, fuck man. When do, when do, when do your numbers go down on the road? That's the scary part as an artist. Like that's the real tell. Like, oh, man, oh, fuck, I done put these tickets on sale. Uh, uh, boy, they, they, they uh, ain't moving at all, huh? Y'all say, did we, did we announce it? We did? Okay. <laughs> did y'all put it up on Twitter? The baby yeah, sold yeah. more tickets. Yeah, than I, was I mean, shit, if that, if that starts cracking, that's your insight. But, I mean, dude, this may have been, like, my biggest fucking touring. I've been touring, I've been touring at the highest level of arenas. I don't know, what, 10 years now? 10, 12 years? It's wild, Kev. It's stupid. I, I, I was just in Riyadh, and I saw you do your set there, and I was curious to see if you still had it mm -hmm. in, 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 in the stand-up mm -hmm. arena because cause you, you are so fucking busy. You go from movie to fucking... Podcast slash coldest balls mm -hmm. with that that format. Uh, running your social media, I'm sure with the team, but still to um, uh, uh, business, uh, business at, like everything. And I I don't know how you do all of it and then still do all of it at the highest level. Most people can't do one of those things at the highest level. But well, that's that's what this special is. This special, this special was just to like hush the murmur. No, it, that's what it did. It was great. Yeah. I, I I didn't say it was it was great. I saw it. I, I walked out and I was like, "Holy fucking shit, that guy's good." Yeah, that guy this one is this hilarious. One was, <laughs> and here's the crazy thing about performing in Riyadh, right? Riyadh. So, you know, there's a there's a one thing to make sure I say this correctly so people can like really understand it. All right, so in in stand up comedy, it's like, what do you want? What are you trying to do? Like, what is your, what is your, what is your thing? And what, like, within the thing that you think you have, how are you going to grab it? When I look at Chris Rock, when I look at Dave Chappelle, I'm just using them as two examples, right? They both two, they do two different things extremely well. You're looking at two guys that have been a topic in conversation through the duration of their careers, right? Who constantly recreate themselves mm. and put out an hour of material. By the way, groundbreaking and not only put out an hour of material um a distinctive version of an hour of material and dave's approach to doing his material um is one of not just art but dave is not afraid to stand in the fire address the climate the temperature of the climate and the the context and how he's being perceived and how he wants to like be perceived. He's not afraid to do that. Both can be political, but extremely clever in how they deliver the messages, right? Um, Chris, at the same time, has thrown like this edgy take to family household problem, like bad problems, but I'm okay with talking about them because now that I'm who I am today, I'm a different man than I was. It's a rebuilding. He's always redefining, rebuilding, but still inclusive and insightful as to what is happening today. My shit was, I said, yo, I want to fucking, I want to appeal to the world. How do I get to the world? How do I build the fucking brand in comedy that allows me to travel the world and put me in a place where I don't have to change? By world, I do mean fucking world. You're talking about me being over there in fucking Saudi. 
not adapting, not not conforming, not changing. I, I wasn't sure if they were going to understand your jokes or even be allowed to laugh at Didn't some of them. Change a yeah, thing? Yeah. And you can go from Bahrain to Germany, Australia. I mean, you go down the list. Like when I say the goal is to make the world laugh, that's the goal. So to get and obtain that world of brand like ability, you have to appeal to the world. You have to appeal to the mass brand like partners, producers that can put you on the biggest platforms to light up the room, to get in the room. So my plan to get there, it was well orchestrated. Like that's not a, mm. it's not a fucking accident. So in doing it, my choice was go heavy family, go heavy kids. Human. Everybody has it, mm. Kevin. Let's hone in on this. As you do that, the world that grew with you and that watched you from the beginning well, some of that world will go, oh, my God, man. <laughs> he ain't the same. He's the edge. Where the fuck is it at? Man, he ain't doing... Well, you're, you're not privy to the big picture, yeah. the big goal. And by the way, that's not a you problem. That's just you not knowing what I want, what I'm going after. So after getting there, I said, you know what I'm going to do? Let me, let me just give a, a, a reminder and just show you that like, whenever I want that flick, of a switch can be turned on. Like, it's not an accident that the comedians or performers that do it at a certain level, that it's only a small group that operate at that level. Like, it's not an accident. Yeah. Like, they're very honed in on their craft. They know what they're doing. Male, female, the, the conglomerates that share a high level of success, they know how to operate. And I can go down a list. There's a list of a good 20 that operate at the highest level every fucking year. And people come out to see them every fucking year. It's because that foundation, that goddamn audience, they're married to them. They're not going anywhere because they've grown with them. That's what comedy does. So occasionally, you give the insight in the moment of a reminder. And that's what this one is. This is a reminder. It's so good. That's what this yeah, one man, is. Your dad, the, the bitch about your, your father. <laughs> so true, Come man. on, man. What do you, <laughs> Come on. What do you so prefer true. to do? Do you prefer to be the edgy Kevin Hart or do you prefer to be the, the global, uh, relatable Kevin Hart? Because, for example, you brought up Dave. Me and Logan have both had on separate occasions the, the <laughs> fucking luxury, the blessing to be able to spend five or six hours with Dave on random nights. I'm going to be honest with you. He's a wild man. Mm -hmm. That man is wild. He's a, he is a wild, wild man. And when he goes on stage, it's basically he's the same off stage as he is on stage. Yes. He's, a, he's, a, he's a loose cannon. Yes. <laughs> so, so question number one is which one do you prefer? And question number two, am I ever going to be hanging out with you 4 a.m. Brisbane <laughs> random nightclub with a yeah. bunch of like strange type people yeah, or no, is that not gonna happen it'll never happen <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's just nip that in the butt right yeah, now. Yeah, it'll yeah, never happen yeah. by the way it means i'm on drugs <laughs> if, if, if i'm there i'm i'm at rock bottom yeah. okay yeah. uh dave made a career out of it here's what dave is here's what dave does and this is what dave can do and this is why you gotta love dave right fucking one of the, he's my brother like he's not even a friend dave is my fucking brother in this thing called comedy He's so smart. He positioned himself in the business to not be a work for hire, be a partner, control the entity and the only entity that he cares about most, which is the entity of crowd engagement. My live performance. He controls it. He puts up shows when he wants to. He controls that tour in business, 95%. I'm willing to bet he's partnering with Live Nation and they still get a small piece, but that's just because of the overall business and the relationship between Chappelle and Live Nation throughout the years. So he allows them to come in and still have that business, but Dave controls that. He can do it whenever he wants. Nobody else can control that. Dave doesn't have the worry of uh, studio saying we're not going to book you and do movies with you. 
We're pulling your book from the shelves. We're not going to air your television program, et cetera. We're not doing the branding partnership. You're, we're pulling you from the NBA and all the sponsorship. He doesn't, he's not a part of that. He has no desire to be. So the one partnership that he made and that was in his best interest was one that came from years of like friendship and building. So the Netflix and Chappelle relationship yeah. is one that I love and value because that's a true relationship. Mm. That's not a we're in this based off of what some say and what some may not say. We understand one another and we're best for each other because we understand each other. I don't have that luxury, right? Like J.P. Morgan Chase, DraftKings, I mean, C4, Hydro, Fabletics, and that's just me throwing a couple out. I can go down the list between Netflix, NBC Universal, Peacock, you, Sam's Club. You got partners. I mean, I have a lot of partners. Yeah. Roku, I mean, I have, yeah. I have tons of partners. And I say partners because these aren't, these aren't like work for hires. We're in relationships where my interest is your interest and your interest is my interest. Audible, same. Like I got there's a list and and I'm committed to the relationship and the growth behind it. So right now my resume underneath the corporate structure and the personal appearance and 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 ambassador and ownership side of it is one of progression and success. Attaching me to a brand has been proven to elevate a brand. Attaching me, giving me the opportunity to have a voice, be a part of the growing and the, the, the beginning to end, it shows that we'll both come out way ahead. When you look at Fabletics, there wasn't Fabletics Men. I launched Fabletics Men. Mm. Fabletics Men is, is an amazing brand, but I didn't sign up because it was just an amazing brand. I signed up because I wanted to help you grow the brand. I'm committed to that thing. So I don't have the luxury of going out and fucking off. Like, I don't have that. I can't, I don't have the luxury of the bad view. I feel like even if you did, you just probably still wouldn't chill with Mike at 4 a.m. in Brisbane. <laughs> yeah, I that, don't, that I, wouldn't happen First for of sure. all, I don't think he meant to like, <laughs> he won't chill with me. I think he's not going to no, no, be No, no, that's there. what I meant. No, that's what in I the, meant. Oh, no, okay. Mike, I just feel like bad things are happening at 4 a.m. with you. Like in, in any environment. I yeah. feel like you at 4 a.m. doesn't seem like four a.m. Mike's still with no, good no, decisions. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, Mike is yeah. not the best decision. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, but I will say, though, from the stand-up perspective, you know, if I could in the perfect world, this last special, I'm very edgy. I'm, you know, I, I, I gave glimpses of old, right? I didn't go crazy, crazy, but I went crazy enough to get, have people go, oh, wow, oh, shit. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that that's my forte and that's the world that I'm embarking on or that I want to stay, you know, you know, true to. It just means that every once in a while, giving a reminder is cool, but for the bigger picture, for the bigger scheme and the bigger idea of the business that I'm in, um, you know, I, I want and need families, households uh, on a global level. I mean, Heart House, I've now got a fucking fast food chain. Yeah. Like, we it's wanted, not we made wanted it, to talk about you, it. No meat. You made the burger without meat. Plant-based. Plant-based fast food chain. Would you, are you a big plant guy? I'm a plant-based guy when I want to be a plant-based guy. I'm not like plant, plant-based or else. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, yeah, it's this or die, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, if I catch you with any meat in your hand, it's over for you. No, I'm I like, was, I, I was talking about it before you came in. I'm, that's why I'm making a joke about it. But obviously, like, you're, you're, I feel like everything that you do is positioned in the the future traje trajectory of an industry or vertical. Everybody knows that soy and plant based are are a, a big part of the future mm -hmm. as health and wellness becomes a, a major, you know. Uh, perspective and, and and growth space, right? And so, like, I completely understand your positioning there. Well, I just have my own burger shop. Take out this, right? Listen, let's take out the, <laughs> take out the health and wellness part of it. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a different understanding. And you're gonna go wild. This makes yep, sense. Yep. Remove health and wellness. I don't even discuss health and wellness when I talk about the plant based fast food chain heart house, right? I discuss the option. What I found as a person that dabbled in the space of plant based. When I went to a fast food chain, I had the option of getting one sandwich. It was one burger on the menu. And when you go to a restaurant, you may see four or five. There was a limited amount of things to choose from for this particular customer. And 
what I said to myself is, I was like, damn, man, it'll be dope to have the option. Like when I pull up and I see the McDonald's, the Wendy's, the Burger King, et cetera, right? And all these places are great. People love them. They've been here for years. I said, how dope would it be to just have an option? Not to say everybody go eat there, but if people wanted to try it, you can try it, love it, and still love what you love. Like there is no world of commitment that comes with an option. Life is about options. So I said, if I can be the first to market with the plant-based fast food chain that serves as an option, it's a burger, a double burger, a chicken sandwich, and a spicy. Tater tots and fries. It's simple. It's nothing crazy. It's not like I'm on some groundbreaking shit. It's just good food, and people go, oh, that's dope. Then I got the option. I'm not selling you the idea of a false presentation of anything outside of that. And the success is growing because people are just like, yo, that's dope as hell that this is here because I didn't know where I could get something like this. And if I do like plant-based food, and I do want to like enjoy fast food. Why can I enjoy it at the same level that the people that go and get fast food enjoy it at on the regular? Yeah. Why can't I have the same thing? You, you filled the hole in the market. Pretty much. Yeah, because there really was no, like, there's, I won't name them obviously because they're comps, but like, there were some other options, but they they weren't like the same style. Like you couldn't roll in there, get a guaranteed product that you that you knew you were gonna like, blah blah, so on and so forth. So I, See, dude, I respect it. You don't name them. I would because I, I wouldn't name them in a manner where I'm shitting on them. I think I think anybody <laughs> that embarks in the space of business is doing it because of the original idea, and it's always a good idea. As you do it, you discover things, and then you shape mold into the thing that it has to now be. Um, I think that nobody's not necessarily doing it wrong. Uh, some people have done it just to where uh, mistakes have been highlighted, right? But it's a it's a market that's growing. Who it's, are the comps? Is it like like veggie this, grill and shit like that? Uh in this space, um, slutty vegan. I know slutty yeah, vegans yeah, doing, slutty yeah. they're doing a great job. Yeah. Um, they were in Atlanta, and I'm I'm a fan of slutty vegan. Have been amazing. Was that a girl? Uh, yes, it's a it's a woman, a woman that. <laughs> That owns it. And I feel I like there's a ton of those in LA. There's <laughs> not the restaurants. I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> I know that. I know that in Brooklyn, I think she opened some. I know in Atlanta, she's been doing great business. But I love that it's just a business that's promising and growing. Like where people, people really sometimes tend to think that there's only room for one thing, right? There's only room for one thing. Yeah. Look, you got your prime in your hand. I don't give two shits. Well, they told me I couldn't set it on the table. Well, you know, listen, it doesn't matter. Can I? Let's, who cares? Like, it's okay. What, yeah, but like, what? Don't do, do they it. think don't we're going to fight? Do not. But do they think we're going to fight? I don't know. I don't know. I was told. No, that's they want to fight. Listen, but that's my point. Like, there's, it doesn't matter. Like, you are building a foundation that stands, and your people are responding to it. That's dope as shit. So I can't put it on the table. I, I don't care. That's, He's not saying yes. I'm going to do it. I would. Put it, put it on this. Put it on this table. This one. See, not, this, not, 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 see, not that one. This, this is one. the context and what I'm speaking on that acts as a problem in today. <laughs> what is wrong? There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I don't know. But, I was told I couldn't put it on the table. But in a business of brands, <laughs> in a business of brands, in a business of just like commerce, people act as if they're going to be one. It's like, true. Gary yeah. Vaynerchuk put this in a very nice context that I love. Everyone thinks it's uh, it's an or world. It's an it, this or that. Why can't it be an and world? It can't. It can't. And this and that. But it's only that only exists for the people that process that. For the people that process and understand, like, we're, we're telling two different stories. Your story behind your product is different from mine. I love your story. I love the fact that y'all two did it together. Hey, man, I'm rooting for you. Thanks, man. The world of what I'm doing with C4 and my reason behind that. It's a completely different thing. Where we're going in business and our trajectory and product is a completely different thing. So, yes, you share the same space in the overhaul title. So, sort of. But, you don't, but yeah, you don't, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing where I find comfort. Mm. I find comfort in understanding that world. Let me ask you, though. Do you ever feel like you've diluted yourself? Because you, you do do so much. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've spread yourself Not as many as Snoop Dogg. Not well, think, as many as Snoop Dogg. No, no, but... No, but <sighs> think about it, right? I, I feel like you're super hands-on with all... You're, it's a, you're, you're a partner to the, the, yeah. all the products you just... Oh, I don't know the world of Snoop, right? But when you, when you say, I love that Snoop is Snoop and has been Snoop. And I love anybody that still is a conversation at the... 20 plus years. Sure, crazy, totally. Right? Crazy. Um, 
where where I look to shine and where I don't look at it or I have ever looked at it in the space of dilution, if you looked at what the quote unquote idea of diluting yourself is, I mean, you know, it, it would be after doing a certain amount of movies in a year or two years or shows or stand up and movies or TV stand up movies and a campaign. Like if, if you get into that space or you can look up and you go, damn, man, it's been like 12 years. I kind of been doing it all. And the thing that we forget, you're in a business that's not promised. At the end of the day, if you're a work for hire and they decide not to hire you no more, you're just not hired yeah. if you built nothing. Now, if you are a work for hire and while being a work for hire, you built your likeness and that likeness gets you into the rooms where opportunities exist to make you a partner, owner, investor, face. And those ideas and those concepts take you to a space of future opportunities to invest, build. Well, now, if you're a part of things that have worked, things that look and now show success, it's all built off of a real resume. So you're no longer a work for hire. You're a proof of concept. Yep. And that concept allows you to build and build more. So you're not diluting when you're building. If I was just the guy that's a work for hire on all these brands, then it would be different. I'm an owner. I uh, respect. I'm okay. an investor. I see. So when I choose to give my likeness, it's because I believe in the thing and I want to see the thing get to the next stage of success. I can remove myself at any point. But if the thing that we're talking about and it's come from a conversation internally and we have now made the decision that it's best to ignite or, or curate a campaign based around, well, then let's go get. I'm also at a point, because of all these relationships, where I can create the next one. Yeah. Yo, man, you know what? I've been traveling a lot. I want to find a luggage company that I can go invest in and honestly give myself to in a way that I haven't yet because traveling connects the dots with everything else. I buy it. I love luggage. Now, how do you fucking get all these people in a room and then get all these people to do business together. How do you get them to do business with you under your umbrella and do it together? Mm. That's the difference. That's where you're talking about the bigger side of thinking and the bigger concept that some can't see because they only look at the work for hire aspect. I don't look at that. That's that's the ground floor. That's the entry level. You know what? You know what's when I was surprised um, when you launched was uh, your tequila, mm -hmm. Grand Cormino. Yeah, I was just so curious because you know tequila is is. At least what I thought, like Dwayne, you know, has that space. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, he's doing a very good job. Yeah, Terramana is, yeah, doing, like Terramana good is job. doing great. Um, what it, is it? It's called Terramana. Is is Dwayne's? His is called Terramana. Uh, DJ's been around, I think, probably for like, uh, I want to say maybe four, four and a half years. Is it top of twenty? Right. So, so I was, so, I was just curious because. You know, he he had been crushing in the mm -hmm. space, and then out of nowhere, you la you launched one. Like mm -hmm. like you didn't you didn't look at the mountain that was Dwayne Johnson's empire. And I know you guys are tight, but and then uh, the tequila that was working, and go, damn, this is a competitive space mm -hmm. with with like a, a friend of mine who I know is power. Like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let him have that. You you attacked it still. Well, you gotta you you have to have an understanding. Like they're not one and the same, right? And when you think about the world of alcohol, how big is the world and how far is the outreach for alcohol in success, right? If you're talking about billions of people and you feel like you can create a product that will get the return and engagement because of the quality and taste, then it means you are in the game. Now, if you just throw your name on something, well, it's a shit show for you. Mm. So I chose not to throw my name on something. What I did was I went the opposite way. I went and found the best partner that tequila could provide. Juan Domingo Beckman, uh, the biggest distributor when it comes to tequila in the world. Uh, the guy comes from like 11 generations of success. He's Damn. Jose Cuervo, Dobell, Dobell. I mean, the, the umbrella of product created underneath him, his distillery, uh, I mean, like he's, he has done so much. I flew to him. I want to do this, but I want to do it correctly. I want to partner with you. I want to put real skin in the game. And 
I want us to sit across from each other and say we equally share the same investment and we equally want the same thing. I'm not looking for the opportunity of exit. I'm looking for the opportunity of mirroring your longevity. How do I get to a space where Grand Cormino can basically be generations of? How do I create that for my family? Well, I do it by attaching myself to somebody who's done it right. So I went and fucking took four years to develop. It took me four years to develop my tequila. Our Cristalino was first. I did Cristalino because I said, right now within culture, the idea and understanding attached to Cristalino isn't clear. People don't know what it is. People think of Cristalino is a Blanco. You don't know that it's a premium tequila that's available. That premium tequila that's available is at a price point that most couldn't afford. The ones that were not at that price point, people have no desire or want to even touch it on the shelf because they don't know what it is. Oh my God, what if I take that premium price point Bring it down to an affordable price point is my entry. That's my entry version of tequila. But if my taste is actually at the premium level, and then my definition and my reason and my story is interesting enough, I can grab them because it's good. You know what? Let's figure out how to grab them. Well, why don't we mirror it with what we feel everybody is like a part of and what everybody can basically relate to? Hard work. Hard work in when you do work hard, when you do have something that you're working towards, well, that's like a journey. How do you celebrate hard work? How do you celebrate your journey? That's what I want this to be about. How do I bring everybody to the same table and we all are celebrating different versions of our success? Because everybody's wins are different. Got it. Are you the hardest working man in Hollywood or is it Hugh Jackman? The Rock. Mark Wahlberg. David Blaine. I don't, I don't think there's a such thing. Ice Cube. I don't think there's a such thing because, you know, the, the hardest working person in Hollywood can sit at the top of said entertainment company and they're navigating the investors that have all invested into the studio to help make the movies and the bottom line's got to be met. And if we don't, then we're underneath. And like, I see. This, everybody, like everybody's on a different are, are landscape. You the, are you the hardest, smartest working man in Hollywood? You got to be up there, bro. I, work I think I am, I am a guy that's committed to doing the work. Mm. I'm one of the guys that are committed, guys or, or women. I'm one of the, the hard workers in this town. Um, and not because I have to. Because I want to. What time do you wake up at? 4 35. Oh, because Mark Wahlberg now. wakes up at two. So what I think is he's, <laughs> Mark, Mark he's already Wahlberg. got three hours on you before you even get out of Let me bed. Tell you something. Mark, <laughs> Mark. That's why Bow Wow got that role. I'm gonna what? be honest with you, bro. Because <laughs> you know, Bow Wow gets up at like three. I can't call bullshit <laughs> on Mark because we did a movie together and Mark was up early, but he, he did get sleepy around 3 p.m. <laughs> Yo, See, I can't have that. Around 3 p.m. he disappears. <laughs> yeah. So that nap time could be Bro, I've read out. that like 24-hour breakdown of his day. It's fucking crazy. Mark is, Mark is a very uh, committed, systematic guy. But some of the hours were just like strange. Like it would be like workout starts 6 a.m. I see that. 9, that would just 9, 9, 9 a.m. prayer. I'm was, like, you did a three-hour and 15-minute workout? Probably during, that was probably during... A timeline where he was trying to achieve something. Uh, so from this time to this time, yeah, we'll here's going to be my schedule. We'll like say. that's not Mark. That schedule doesn't exist for his 24 hour period. I mean that's right. But this is where I mean how literal the world takes. Yeah. Jesus Christ, he's only spending <laughs> 16 minutes with his kids. <laughs> that's what, <laughs> what a dick. Like, yeah, is that uh, me? Right, that yeah, looks like, like what I did. He's, like, like, he's a guy. <laughs> that's it crazy. was probably for a certain period of time, and you know he. He did it for, you know, Mark's a, he's also a fitness lover too. You know what I mean? Like he, he trains really hard. He has, that's how he like energizes. And I think it's like Nick Cannon probably energizes through having kids. Well, I think those are <laughs> two different things. And, I, and I'm not sure that. Uh, Yo, that how many is, kids does he have now? More or less than Elon? Uh, I he got know. like what, 20? Tw no, 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 10 plus. 30? 12. 10 plus. He's got 12. I, I respect, I respect the, the spread of the seed. I That's respect rough. it. I respect Imagine it. Imagine how many like grandkids there will be. It, put it this way. Nick Cannon is the modern day Genghis Khan. I don't know. I don't know. What, what does that mean? Who's Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan. I mean, it's not said disrespectful ever. Though. Yeah, he's like a he was, dictator. He was, yeah, wild he was dictator. A, Mon Mongolian Mongolian yeah. uh, warlord back yeah. in the, I want to say 1200s. Fact check me. Yeah. But, um, but he, he, you know. Oh, Man's I'll fact check you. Man's <laughs> <laughs> Let me go look up. When was Genghis Khan? Uh, oh, yeah. 12, 1200s. 
Yeah, our show here at 1208. 1206. Like, this show okay. sucks, man. Uh, Genghis Khan was the first leader of the Mongol Empire. Listen, but the man spread a seed. Mm -hmm. The man spread a seed. Um, I, I think Nick is, uh, if you talk to Nick, Nick is a very uh, smart guy. Nick is a guy who has a good heart, good head on his shoulders, and stands on the ground that he creates. So, you know, um, I don't I don't have a perception overview. Like, I, I love Nick to death. Nick is, that's another one of my guys. And, and talking to him. Why do you keep him, making that noise? He did not have the same stuff to say about you. Nick? Nick did Again? It's the second so one much ever. ego squeezed into such a small Jesus man. Christ, did Nick say that? <laughs> he makes us call him Mr. Hart. I mean, son we can't look him in the eye. Yeah, son it, of I mean, bro, do you, I feel like your <laughs> your perceptions of some of these people in your circle are just way off, bro. <laughs> Damn it, Nick. I really thought you had my back. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, at least in your inner circle, I love the way you elevate your friends. Yes. You, you, know, you know, like the day ones? Yes. And I see you on Instagram buying your boys cars and stuff. Yes. And, and you're very generously sharing your success, and I think it's fucking awesome, dude. I think it's a, a lonely, lonely world at the top. And if you have people that are lucky enough or fortunate enough to be a part of the journey with you that, you know, you can put in positions to win, um, those are the dopest examples of, like, real success to me. It's like how many people around you um, are not benefiting from the give but benefiting from the create like what what are we creating what did you take advantage of and build what did you put into action and how were we able to do said things like you know i think that's one of the the biggest pieces to my success man is the fact that we can say that we're still we're still around each other granted you know there's your Good days, bad days, we're brothers, so you're going to have that. But that thing is still there. Uh, and we've, we've grown from boys to men. You know, we, like, from households, families, kids, home. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy when we sit back now and think about how far we've come. We've been on the road for 19 years, 20 years, same group. And we've been friends before the role presented itself. What happens when you're close friends and you're like really, really close? The idea of challenge, it it starts to appear more than like not. Like, you know, because if, if one person is at the top, you find yourself delegating or talking a lot. And over the course of time, to your friends, to your brothers, they build up a thing where like they don't want to hear that shit. Yeah. And you don't know shit. You don't know what you think you know. And sometimes fuck you. And I'm gonna show you that you'll know. And I'm gonna go do this shit and make this shit better. Cause he don't need and sometimes like that thing, it just festers and they have to happen for sometimes for, you know, for there to be an overall resetting of respect and appreciation. Mm. And and what you realize is that you don't say we respect each other all the time. We don't say we love you all the time or whatever. And over the course of time when that doesn't happen, there's like an overview of assumption. And that assumption can be the positive side or the negative side. And sometimes when it's negative, the bullshit brews. So what you're talking about sounds like the brewing of some bullshit. Oh, no, no. I was just, I was just wondering. It has nothing to do with anything. I was just uh, wondering. Right. Oh, okay. Got it. We brew. We I hope one day that I can be as generous with my friends as you have been with yours, like everyone except Mike. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dare you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nah, I'm you know, a, like I'm gonna I'm 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 make Michael happy. Do you give long, your friends? How long have you guys been friends? You give your friends equity and brands. They, yeah, they have things. Not, I mean, not all my stuff. The things that they deserve. Yeah, to have equity. Yeah. I don't. I give, mean, when they work and they promote, I don't and all give that any. I want to make this very clear. I don't give anything. They are. Respect. Yes, I, I want to make that very clear. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not giving out rewards and giving out <laughs> gifts. Like that's only cool until you go. Hey, look, this shit is stupid, right? Like that has a, a time limit on it. So I haven't given out gifts that haven't been earned in a long time. The things that they're in position to have and build on they've created and 
you know, there's some that create more than others, and there's some that are fine with the space of creating that they're in. But they're they're maximizing those opportunities. That's not coming like I don't have the bandwidth to think about ways to give you stuff. I'm not in that position in my life. And that would be selfish of them to act like I For am sure. at this point. So For sure. once again, it's what I was talking about, about the equal understanding mm. and respect level that you need to table every once in a while and just make sure that we're all on the same front with. Just a quick question. How long do we have them for? Because I, I know I know you, I think you got a, a time limit, right? And I don't want to keep you Looks forever. Let's just say another 14, Cause, cause, max. He's got a 630 hard out. There you go. That's, that's what she that, was, it, that, she gave me that eye. That's that true? In her eyes, I, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's I, fine. All right. Um, <laughs> Cause I mean we could we could go forever, but uh, yeah, we'll, well get, there's just so much, bro. Maybe another just, like five to ten. I, I said fourteen, and we got an agreement. Why are you gonna dial it back? I, yeah, I'm just being nice. Listen, uh, you get far being nice in life. You're never nice to me. Wow. Well, you don't. You know. You don't. Uh, I'm not here to give you anything. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> giving you shit. By the way, certain activities Still. drain 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 you one yes. one's energy. Certain other activities. Make you feel full. Mm -hmm. What is an activity that you do? Maybe maybe non work related. Where like man, you walk a dog and you're like, that was cool. That, that was a good walk with that dog. Go kart. Uh, no, nah, you know what I like, man. Honestly, I don't like go kart. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just a go. <laughs> I just was by over. yourself. Who's go karting by herself? <laughs> He's really sorry. Go kart or this? go kart. What was this childhood? Go kart. Go kart. <laughs> what? I'm really. It's sorry. one go kart. <laughs> You're just like pushing it and jumping in it what are you doing, Mark? by yourself. I'm sorry, oh my God. I really, I'm sorry. So besides <laughs> go kart, uh, I love, dude. Honestly, my my happy space <laughs> is the gym. I, yes, I yeah. really like the gym. But I can be in the gym by myself in the morning, and I'm fine. Like I'm a I'm a two a day guy. I'm fine, dude. That's crazy. I'm fine. Like I love it. Morning workout, afternoon cardio. I'm fine. Trainer? Music on. Trainer's there in the morning. Later on, I'm by myself. Music's on or not. <laughs> TV show on the iPad while I'm on a treadmill. Sometimes, like, you know, if, if my wife is a little pissed, she'll let my little ones sit in the gym with me and they fuck it all up. Yeah. But for the most part, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm by myself, like, I'm, I'm so good. Like it's it's my happy place. Yeah. See, I would think that that is an activity that drains you. Like like you're 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 expending a lot of energy physically, and then and then you got to be a dad too. Holy shit! To like what three kids? Four. Four kids. But what do you get? Like it's a difference, right? Like if if your workout if you're going into your workouts with the ah, I gotta do this shit again. Yeah. Right. It's different. Yeah. But if you're getting up, you're like, oh, fucking time to go. It's a different thing. Mm. Like, like I'm in the gym and I'm happy about being in the gym. What, what's a workout you like? I mean, I don't, I don't mind any of them. Really? Yeah. Like I don't, I don't like. That's the thing. It's, it's more. It's all mental for me. You still have that trainer who like, like bullies you? <laughs> well, boss. Yeah, he doesn't bully me. <laughs> but yes, boss. 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 He's, a, big, he's a big guy. He's boss is a very big guy. Yeah. If, if he, he feels angry to me every yeah. time I come around him. Fuck, just, complete I'm, opposite. Really? Complete opposite. Now, boss, boss used to be uh, more of a high, but he's like, he's a complete different guy, man. Complete different guy. Like, very smart guy. That's an example of a guy that's turned into like a business mind, a businessman Sharp. over the course of years. Like, um, you know, but... Uh, relationship that proves itself just like the rest of the friends like that whole group that whole pcb group like these relationships are proven and over the course of years everybody has progressed and gotten better man and you got yeah. an acronym uh plastic For, cup boys oh yeah pcbs plastic cup boys that's what we started off when we were younger because we man, said you everybody that has a plastic cup is having a good time you, got you go acronym? to picnics got a goddamn acronym yeah, everything PCBs. with him is not like an, it's like the Logan Paul, like LPG. Like, yeah. are you in the Logan Paul group? It's all him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not, there's no plastic cups. Yeah. That's the dip. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, yours not, seems much more democratized. That's not, that's not true. That's not true. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be drinking or, or smoking or partying right now with, with the output you're doing. No. Yes. Not right now. Not right now. You, you, ever take, you ever take bender breaks? No. I'm not a bender guy. Uh, Were you? But I mean, like, if you're talking like drinking and having your crazy, like, days where you. Are going crazy with the drinking, then yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm 43 now, so it's not 
It's, I just want to make a very clear thing. It's different when you get older. The recovery yeah. from drinking is not the same. Yeah. So you're scaling back, not because you're a prude, but because physically you can't, you can't keep doing that. Can't shit. hang no more. Not not at that level. Not right, right. not getting on the plane, getting off the plane, and you throwing them back every night. No shot. No shot. And I'm gonna be honest with you, that shit start to age you, man. Yeah. You start to look fucked up. Like I've been around some people <laughs> that's like 28. Oh, you 28? <laughs> God <laughs> damn. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like you you get to a point where you're just a little more conscious, uh, conscious of just how you're taking care of yourself. Um, and, and by the way, like in drinking, like you can drink, there's ways to drink, but you don't have to be on the excessive side of it after a certain point. Right. So I think the years where you're supposed to do that and enjoy it, go by all means do it. But, I'm glad you, know. you said that because you said earlier as well, exceed expectations. And I, I try to make it a point to exceed my own expectations with how much I could drink. Okay. And, and that often leads to me just, you know. Going a little too hard. But you're, but you're young now. What are you? How do you? Uh, 12. What are you? 28. 28. Yeah, you're yeah. under 30. What are you talking about? These yeah. are the years. What are you supposed to I'm do almost that? done. I'm almost done. I'm, ch I'm chilling. I'm hanging out right yeah, now. Listen, there's, you're not doing nothing wrong. Yeah. You're not doing nothing wrong. I, I think some people would find exception. No, I don't, man. Like you, Do you understand? There is no blueprint for success. Yeah. There's no book. Man, you talk about it. Like they, don't, they don't give you shit. So you figured out in real time how to handle your version of success. And by the way, there's not a lot of people that can relate to the fucking version that you're seeing in real time. There's not a lot of people that can relate to the version of partying that you're seeing in real time. Mm. There's not a lot of people that have the access to the world of access that you have in real time. So everybody's opinion doesn't matter because they can't see the same thing. Yeah. They weren't in the same position. So... You got to be able to check yourself and go, all right, let me let me pull back a little bit. This is getting a lot. Like, I ain't going to be around too long if this is it. Keep living yeah. Or, like this. hey, man, look. Also, at some point, my only piece of advice is just look at the motherfuckers around you that are part of that, like, party. Not, like, your closest friends. I'm saying the other Don't people. Look at me. You live in Puerto Rico. You live on yeah. an island. I'm saying I'm the other people. You drove me there. Don't. I left LA because of you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> look what look you at started, the, Kevin Hart. Look at <laughs> look the what people, you started. And and then you got to start to like look at where those. All right, let me just start to look and see the the meter, and the lives on the meter around me, and am I fucking like going down? Yeah, for sure. You know what for I mean? Sure, like you got to sure. at one point, hundred percent. You got to see that, and as long as you're privy to that, yeah. then you'll be okay to whatever decision. You make as long as you're not oblivious to that. We didn't talk, we didn't really get to talk about any of the like downsides, the rises of stardom, like getting booed off stages, your relationship with your father. We didn't get to talk about any of that stuff. Now nah, shut up. Well, well, all we talked about was all the good stuff, the yeah. business. I'm a, a billionaire. Me and Dwayne Rock Johnson said, are best friends. I, I like, bro, what I'm that. saying is this, bro. <laughs> it's been a bragathon, Kevin R. Bragathon. Yo, welcome <laughs> to the Bragathon. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. Yeah. Do you have any message to the people right now who are trying some new shit? who are getting booed off the stage, who are scared to write their first book, who are, you know, scared to get on a track and sing a song and do something that they're passionate about because they got anxiety or they're stressed out or they're scared or they're not confident enough. You got a message as someone who did go through the trials and tribulations of getting big. Uh, well, first thing, you know, uh, accountability is huge, right? And when I say that, I'm referring to the questions being asked every day. <laughs> Right, like you, that was a you have to take accountability. Okay? I'm so sorry, and dude. I'm and so sorry. the path of this amazing conversation <laughs> ultimately is navigated yeah. by those that are directing. Yeah, fact. so at some point, the accountability has yeah. to go. I took offense to yeah, what you are right. You are right. Yes, to what you, said, you are okay? right. We asked right. you so many business <laughs> questions. Right. God so, dang, fuck, so, man. fuck. So, we botched so, it, dude. With that being said, uh, <laughs> I will say. I will say the the piece of information that I would give to anybody coming up is, man, it's so dope to struggle and do bad. It's not a bad thing, man. Mm. It's it's so dope to not have it figured out mm. and work to figure it out. It's so dope to have a reason to get up and go at it every day. It's it's a fucking great feeling. Do not underestimate um, the good and the search and find. 
right? It's if it if it was that easy, oh my god, it's like there's no story behind it. And fucking life without stories is boring. I don't I don't want to live in a life where I can't tell stories or hear stories. Like that's that's not cool to me. I I, I would much rather work figure it out and then be able to say oh my god what was crazy is like when we didn't have it figured out and we fucking almost lost it twice and then we got to go and do it but thank god we made the deal because that deal ended up saying like you need that or oh my god yo when i was first bombing on stage i thought about quitting but i didn't because the guy that was in the bathroom when i was taking a shit he was talking to me on the stall and he was like man i'm nervous about going on he didn't even want to go up and it made me like damn he ain't here bitching about going up. I'm dead go up. Fuck that. I ain't going to be a bitch. I'm going to go. Like, you you need the things to, like, use this fuel and fire to, to go on. So embrace the boo. Embrace the bomb. Embrace the fail. Um, and when you talk to people that don't have any of them, I, I ask you to, to really check and see, like, how real those conversations are. They exist for us all, from the biggest of the big to the smallest of the small. It's so hard to hear that when you're in the trenches and you're scared or you're hurt or you're broke or you're fucking fucked up on drugs, whatever it is. Yeah. But it's just so important to have those back against the wall moments. They define your life. They become what you take with you for the rest of your days on this planet. They make you who you are. Everybody so has a important. different version of one. And they, may, they don't all need to be the same. Everybody has a different version of one. Everybody doesn't need to be homeless. Everybody doesn't need to be broke in the story. Everybody doesn't need to be on drugs in the story. Everybody has a different version of the thing. The different version from the billionaire father that gave me the money and I fucked off the money. I had to go back to my parents again. We all look at that and shut the fuck up. But we don't know what that household's like and how the level of uh, embarrassment that it is for one to go and fuck up the... You don't know those things. Like, we don't know the meter and, and the range of feeling attached to that meter. Just like some don't know the one attached to drugs or living out your car or, you know, fucking not having electricity, et cetera. Everybody's story and, and meter is different. So uh, I don't knock anybody's. I don't, I don't judge, um, look down or frown upon. I, I embrace them all. And I hope that, I hope and pray um, that the opportunities are still in front of me and are in arm's reach because I'm still working to do things and I still love discovering what else I can do. And ultimately, um, at this point, it's bigger than me. It's about the foundation of what will be under the umbrella of and what the last name will be for years after me and what jobs will be created, what um, economic holes will be filled uh, what communities, uh, where I come from, will be able to operate and manage differently than what they did in the past. Like it's it's a bigger conversation, a bigger one, a bigger goal. And you know, if I get there, great. If I fail, I fail trying. You gotta look at it in the best way possible. Ultimately, is life. Make the best of it. Respect, Kevin Hart. I I got one more question mm -hmm. before you go. Uh, just why are you wearing sunglasses? We're inside. I always wear them. When I like do the podcast and stuff, because y'all light these things as if there's no fucking light in the room. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's like you, <laughs> it you is bright use as fuck. It is the so strongest bright. fucking lights. It's so and, bright. And then you look up and you look at this shit and it looks like I got a lazy eye yeah, yeah. or, or yeah, yeah. something's bad. All right, all right. And it it goes bad. So when you fucking have the glasses on, like, oh my God, look at it. Look at this shit. Look at this. So you you doing this shit the whole Looks like I'm trying to be yeah. Robert De Niro. Yeah, so, I, so that's when I said, uh, so what did I tell you the other year? Was it? Okay, Kevin's, Kevin's on cocaine. No, I'm not. They got fucking seven goddamn yeah. chicken heating lights. It's, it's, it's too much. All right, all right. All right. He should hit Heartbeat 2023 real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Heartbeat 2023. What is it? Where is it? And who is in... in Good question. Who's Good. <laughs> you, you, Great you really, question. You really picked it you up. Like go -kart. <laughs> Do you like go-karts? Do you like go-karts? After the go-kart question, you really yeah, picked it up, Just Mike. crushing it. Uh, heartbeat. Um, in a perfect world, you know, we are an independent studio now. We are a partner to so many. Um, you know, creating, developing IP. 
um, that's putting us in a position to grow, to scale, and be a part of the bigger conversations that are happening today. So from the world of television, scripted, unscripted, film, um, you know, TV, uh, literature, advertising, um, you know, we are we are a full circle. Um, and within the circle, I can only hope that we continue to grow, we continue to onboard amazing talent, create a talent, and be responsible for the new faces of tomorrow, right? Nothing will make me happier than launching the next stars, right? Or giving the platform for these stars to be seen or their material to be read or the opportunity for the new director to direct. Like, you know, ultimately within Heartbeat, it's it's how, how am I making it a cool thing again to discover the new? Because we forgot that. It's attaching ourselves to the things and the people that we know work because that's where the business makes sense. But there was a time where the conversation of your new comic, your new face, male and female, whatever, um, was one that people focused on a little more. So in our business, you know, we really are, we really are driving towards um, getting back to the times of old that were just forgotten in the days of new. And if we do it correctly, we'll we'll have a lot of success. I'm excited about the projects we got on the way, tons of them, um, and these are inside of myself and outside of myself. So, uh, 2023 will be bright. 2024 will be brighter. Let's go, Kevin Hart, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, man. Good Bro, Kevin, thanks guys. for coming on this podcast. Good job, man. That was that was that was so much fun, man. No, man, I I appreciate you guys ending it on a positive note, yes, sir. Uh, keep going, dude. Like, you're, I love I love that. You know, it's just undefined. And I love what you're doing in the, the WWE. I love what you're doing here within podcasts. I can only uh, cross my fingers and see what you do next, right? And I, I think that you're a great example just of, like, how dope this generation is mm. in creating what the fuck the version of next is that they want it to be. Thank you, man. Like, that's a dope thing. So keep groundbreaking. Keep doing what you're doing and putting your guys in positions to win as well. Yes, sir. Um, but a lot of people are watching. So it's not just me, man. <laughs> yes, sir. A lot of people are watching. Yes, Don't sir. fuck it up. All right. Hit that subscribe <laughs> button. Hit that freaking subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Peace. Before you leave, can I have you look at that camera? Just yeah. give a couple different facial expressions. Do, you do one without yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna move this mic. I got you, buddy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> just, just, and you, you can smile. You can squint. Listen, 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 listen. I got you, buddy. Wrong camera. Yeah, open your wrong eyes. camera, Kevin. <laughs> no, 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 Kevin. No, 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 no. Just the one to your left. It's to your left. Just son of a fucking just this one. Do it with the with the good looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That's that's exactly what we need. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We're gonna run all that.